a brand new year of practically perfect art zone. Hi there and welcome to the show. I'm Nancy Guppy at Georgetown Stables and we are kicking off the new year with a plentitude of great local art. Check it out. Wim Wim goes three for three. An artistic vision at SeaTac. A lot to look at while you're waiting. <laughs> Movie Madness from Matt Lynch. Must see art of 2019. the foot stomp and twang of country lips. We'll begin with renowned global artist Morella Zacharias, whose epic sculptural installation is going to redefine the international baggage claim area at SeaTac. These pieces are going to be 11 feet up in the air on top of each baggage carousel. They're 50 feet long, the baggage carousel is about 70 feet long. So you're going to get to see that from a second floor. And then as you come down to your baggage carousel, then you're like looking at each piece individually from all angles. A lot to look at while you're waiting. <laughs> I grew up in Mexico City. I was there until I was 17. And then I went to Kenyon College in Ohio. So when I graduated from Kenyon in 2000, I moved to Washington, D.C. and. Sure enough, like there was an opportunity. They were looking for an artist to work on a big mural outdoors with Salvadorian youth. And they asked me to be part of it, and I said yes. I will go on to paint 30 public murals in the US, in Mexico, in Guatemala. That kind of became the rhythm of my life. And then I would also teach. I decided to apply to grad school, and I got into Hunter MFA, and I ended up experimenting with materials that led me to create sculptures. I use a lot of materials that are construction materials. I create the shape out of window screen and then we layer it slowly with plaster and other things to make it really hard. So it actually feels like like fiberglass, but it's plaster. Here are five different segments of the sculpture and we're still building layers, doing final touches. Make sure we're sanding and hardening everything and making sure everything fits. We have a great team. We have Henry and Tyna, who are our studio managers. And then we have a big team that helps us make the pieces. And then once it's finished, I mark it all, and then they help me kind of finish up. So it really does require a big team. For the most part, I am playing off the, the movement that already exists on the piece. That's why it's really hard to be like, oh, I know exactly what it's going to look like, because I'm reacting to the sculpture. But this is really fun for me. It's like the icing on the cake. Literally, 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 although it looks like icing. I definitely chose a lot of different colors and there's still more. There's going to be a piece that it's more using more greens and one that is using more, more blues. So basically we have a couple different references people can use when they're painting with all the different colors we're using on just the first sculpture. And then we also have our master color sheets that basically kind of document every color that Merrill has kind of ever used. Seattle has such a strong relationship with the bodies of water and historically water has been so important for the development of the city and the people. 
So I wanted to dedicate these sculptures to that and also water is an element that really connects all of us. Each piece is dedicated to a different body of water. The palettes of each piece are gonna be different and also the movement. The big reveal for me is always once we, we put it on the side and see it all kind of like shine in its, you know, with all its power at once. It's a huge honor to be able to make something that so many people will be able to see. To be able to welcome people when they're coming into the U.S. with this works, it just, it's extremely inspiring. Morella's gorgeous sculptural installation is scheduled to be completed at SeaTac in May of 2020. Well, 2019 is upon us, which means 12 months of new art to experience. And here with some not to miss recommendations are my three favorite art hounds. I'm calling you hounds. <laughs> we have arts and culture writer for Crosscut, Ms. Brangen Davis, and arts and culture writers, Jonathan Zwickel and Katie Kurtz. Hello, you three. Hi. And happy, happy New Year. So the assignment, of course, was to dig deep and uh, bring us a few art events that have captured your attention. We pulled straws. You pulled up short and you are first. first. So go, girl. Excellent. Okay, my first pick is yeah. the Degenerate Art Ensemble. Mm -hmm. And that's a performance art group that's been a long time in Seattle, founded by Joshua Cole and Haruko Nishimura. Who's now going by Crow. I heard that. Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. So Crow Nishimura. Crow yeah. Nishimura. Yeah. Um, and so they do these wild performances with music and video and dance, and it's kind of Bjork meets Wild. Buto, yeah. 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 Um, and so they have a new one called Skeleton Flower, um, and it's a little more autobiographical than their other shows. So it's, is it her story? Kind yes, of? it's okay. based on Crow's uh, childhood, which was difficult in places, mm -hmm. and um, and her story is how her creativity sort of helped her through these hard times. So she's blending that with three folk tales, um, also in which uh, females find that creativity and imagination pulls them through um, difficulties. Um, and so, and as usual, you know, it has these incredible costumes and it's masks. It's glorious, and, the imagery. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's unforgettable. Yeah, cutting yeah. edge. Yes, very, cutting edge. very much. Um, okay, and then the other one is also cutting edge. Mm -hmm. This is the Seattle Symphony's new space called Octave Nine. I have not heard about this. Oh, Oh, good. No, okay. Right yeah. 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 So this is um, it replaces the Soundbridge space, and it's this another fully immersive space. They've got um, this uh, 360 projection, so it's basically a holodeck. Mm -hmm. So they can make it look like wherever you want to be. And then this sound system that I don't understand, but it's called the Constellation, and it can make it sound like you're anywhere you might be hearing a concert in Notre Dame or in a cute little coffee shop. Oh, so cool. to kick it off, they're doing this crazy 24-hour uh, contemporary classical music festival. So one performance an hour all night long. So you're spending Let's the night up. in yeah. there. Yeah. Is this, any better this is our yeah. Night. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So I'm really excited for that. Are those tickets already uh, on sale? They go on sale in February. OK, great. OK, mm -hmm. got to keep an eye on that. All right, oh. very, very nice. And pick it up, my well, dear. Well, uh, coming up at the end of January, the 25th and 26th, is the Timber Winter Music Festival. And that's Timber with uh, three okay. R's or four oh. R's, multiple oh. R's. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, it's the same folks that do the Timber Summer Music Festival, which happens out in Carnation. The Winter Festival is in Leavenworth. Of course it is. Of course, the <laughs> Bavarian town of Leavenworth. It's about two hours east of Seattle. Very authentic. Uh, and, uh, you know, actually a beautiful spot as far as the scenery goes, sure. uh, situated in the mountains out there. And uh, basically it's like a sort of a rock and roll festival that they plant in the middle of Leavenworth. Mm. So it's all night Friday night, um, and then all day Saturday, and then Saturday night as well. And during the day, they uh, plant music uh, around the beer halls and sausage <laughs> stands no, of left stores or whatever it so is. So there's acoustic music and stuff that happens during the day, uh -huh. and then they take over the fest hall, it's called, at night, uh, which is this big sort of event space that's in downtown Leavenworth. Yeah. And uh, they set up a hot toddy garden, mm. uh, and then there's also, of course, like beer flowing, and then you know, band after band on stage, and it's mostly rock and roll and R and B and hip hop. Are and they that mostly sort of local bands? So the headliner is a band called Shannon and the Clams. Yeah. That is uh, a garage rock band, super dancey, upbeat garage rock band from Oakland, California. Okay. 
Um, and then Kyle Kraft uh, is a sub pop signed artist, I think from LA. Um, and then aside from that, it's mostly, mostly local, local stuff. Mostly local names, right? Yeah. yeah. So you've got the True Loves, that's a uh, sort of R&B retro soul band. Mm -hmm. They're doing a tribute to Aretha Franklin. I saw that. Oh, that's which gonna, I'm sure be is gonna be insane. Awesome. Oh, oh yeah. my God, yeah. Um, yeah. And then a band called Highways, that's sort of like cosmic country Americana. Um, another band called Spirit Award that plays this sort of motoric, oh. like rock and roll groove type stuff. And it's all really up Upbeat. Yeah. It's um, it's meant to be kind of a boozy affair. Yeah. Um, it's just a great way to spend a, a winter weekend, weekend. out yeah. of the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So the other one is I'm it's very excited. Yeah. Today. So um, I, you might know the uh, modern American composer named Steve Reich. Yep. Um, uh, he actually spent some time in Seattle in the '70s studying gamelan music, which is oh. this sort of. Um, yeah very mellow style of percussion music. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so he incorporated that into various compositions that he's worked on throughout the decades, um, including one uh, that's called Music for 18 Musicians. One sort piece. Spells it out. Right. Um, mm -hmm. One piece that is about an hour long. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't say that it, it, it doesn't sound like gamelan necessarily, but I think some of the theory that goes into the way those percussion pieces are composed um, Reich integrated into this other modernist, um, minimalist piece of music. Mm -hmm. You know, I've listened to the piece, um, uh, you know, I've got it on vinyl, it's a beautiful piece of music. I think seeing it live, yeah. performed uh, at this place, 415 In Western, Westlake. yeah, it's a beautiful event space. And I think just being there while the music is happening is going to be just a gorgeous experience. By the way, when I saw that you were going to talk about it, I actually already got the tickets. So I bought oh, nice. my tickets. Uh -huh. yeah, I will be there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, great. Excellent. And now Great. you. Great. Yeah. Well, it sounds like immersive is the theme for Indeed. 2019. Indeed. 2019. Uh, Let's get I into think it. a lot of people wanting to get out into the real world and mm -hmm. uh, into experiences. So, uh, my pick, one of my picks is Sheridana Shinatra. Yes. Say that five times fast. <laughs> uh, and her performative installation at the Fry Art Museum called Ditch. Yes. She will be creating an immersive environment, tons of colors, tons of textures. There will be a large scale Mom Donna sculpture of Sheridana. Mm -hmm. And just a little background on Sheridana that is the alter ego persona of performer Jody Keener. Mm -hmm. She draws from contemporary dance, clowning, drag, and so all of these together, she's just brilliant in and, each and of so these. It's so funny, too. Yeah. Super funny. Yes. It's funny with like a little bit Pathos. of like a... Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, just even the way that her like mouth is painted is like, mm -hmm. is that a smile or a grimace or both? <laughs> um, so or she's, a scream. Yeah. 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 She'll be performing every day with her newly formed dance troupe called Donna. Mm -hmm. And her whole goal with it is to make everyone happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all and, for that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, good yeah, right. <laughs> so, uh, so throughout, so they'll be performing every day. The museum's open, and uh, I think it's definitely worth dropping by. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then you got three emerging artists. Yes, in January, uh, in about a two-block radius, there mm -hmm. are three shows, three different emerging artists. Uh, the first, Anthony White, mm -hmm. who I think it's kind of hard to not know who Anthony White is right now. Right. He's really blowing up. So he's having his first solo show. And what I really like about his work, so his, it's not paintings, he does it in this uh, medium called polyactic acid. Yes. So it gives it this textured, kind of raised, glue-like material. It's almost like it's in a tube or kind of like, yeah. A, yeah, it's really very intricate. And I imagine very time consuming. Yes, yeah. But I like how his, both the portraits and the still lifes kind of capture this in-betweenness mm -hmm. of like post-adolescence mm -hmm. and early adulthood where we're often, you know, during that time trying to secure our identity and a lot of it is through the material objects we surround ourselves by mm -hmm. and so his works all have like, are just stuffed with. Um, yeah, they're very full canvas. Yeah. And then uh, Cameron? So Cameron Tulare, mm -hmm. she is a 20 year old, mostly self taught artist. Mm -hmm. She started a series on Instagram as part of this hashtag 100 heads, mm -hmm. which is an uh, Instagram challenge to do 100 portraits. And so her portraits are this kind of iridescent pastel uh, portraits of mostly her friends yeah. and 
I think other people that she's met online. And so this isn't just her first gallery show, but also her first solo show. Ever. Ever. So just completely knocking it out of the park. God, so. the power of Instagram. <laughs> that's oh. incredible. Wow. Definitely. So yeah. all 100 heads will be there. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So that that's will be great. great. And yeah. then rounding that out in the same kind of um, area is Brian Sanchez, mm -hmm. Idol Urge at Treason Gallery. And Treason Gallery, they do mostly street art focused. Mm -hmm. uh, Brian Sanchez has done public murals and his work is mostly abstraction. So these will be abstract paintings. Mm -hmm. And abstract art has been around for a hundred years now, but when it first happened, when artists realized that oh, they sure. could do non-representational right, work, like right. it was so groundbreaking and yeah. it was so huge. And it's something that we take for granted a lot. Mm -hmm. So to, just to have a, you know, artists re-looking at that and bringing a new vocabulary yeah. to what is now a century old tradition. Right. You know, it's not even like, Everything you know, comes around. Exactly. Everything comes around. Yeah. So those yeah. those are a nice little grouping and yeah. uh, definitely, I think, artists to watch in the coming years. Well, great. So a cheers to art and to an outstanding 2019. Hey, Thanks yes. to all of you. Outstanding uh -oh. 2019. Coffee Coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It will be a good year. I promise. feel it right here. I yeah. promise. I, I know. I promise. <laughs> we'll, we'll check back. Is we'll that check on back. Camera? <laughs> yes, it's on camera. <laughs> Adrian, you should be upstage more, right? You can adjust that as you're dancing. Down. Run. 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 Until now, show everything, connect. with one of our very favorite bands. Thank you, Kenny. Country Lips. Hello, boys. Hello. Hey. And this is the lovely Hamilton boys. How are you? On electric uh, guitar and vocals, of course. Yeah. Uh, before we chat, you want to introduce the rest of the mates? Yeah, we can And we'll go start ahead and do on that. our right, right here. Trevor Penders, also Hello. on electric guitar and vocals. Hello, Trevor. Hello. We got Alex Lake on acoustic guitar. Hi, Alex. We got Gus Clark on mandolin, accordion. Yes, indeed. Jonah Byrne on fiddle. Hi, Jonah. Way back there. Miles Burnett on the drums. Hey, Miles. Austin Jacobson on the bass. And the hat. And, of course, this guy right here. Yeah, Kenny Armaki on the piano. 
Well, it's so lovely to have you all here. And why am I talking like this? I need just to stop that. It just seems silly. Rubs off a little bit <laughs> yeah, sometimes. No. Now, we uh, had you on the show 2013, so about five-ish years ago. Yeah. Um, a lot has happened since then. I think some beards and mustaches have grown. Maybe some have been shaved. Um, but, uh, but what else has been going on? I mean, you, you've toured done a couple of tours, right? Yeah, um, yeah, we've done at least a, a few, um, right. probably three or four, five maybe. And then 2016, you put out a record. We did, yeah. Which was? Uh, Till the Daylight Comes, yeah. full-length album. Yeah. Um, yeah, we did that, uh, recorded at a vast with a producer called Randall Dunn. And you put out the tremendous music video, uh, which Thank was you. Grizzly Bear Billboard. Yeah, that's right. Such a great uh, video. I mean, that's MTV for sure worthy. It's just a great, it's really terrific. It was at the Cowlitz. Can Cowlitz Fair? Candy Fair, yeah. 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 How, how did you get in there? You just kind of uh, showed up? We just walked in the, <laughs> walked in the gate, bought tickets. Um, now, so it's 2019. What can we look forward to from the lips this year? Is it 2019? It uh, is we, 2019. Okay. Uh, that's great. We, uh, yeah, we have some new, we have some new record, uh, new songs coming out. Yep. Uh, we recorded some of them already. We're going to re record some more. Mm -hmm. um, at least we're going to put out a, a digital single to start. Great. Um, and then we have our 10-year anniversary show coming I up. I know that. Which is very yeah, exciting Yeah, that's very for exciting. Us. Yeah. Uh, we somehow have all survived so <laughs> I far. know, and it's most of you, I mean, it's pretty much the, the, the same lineup, a few changes, but yeah. for the most of the time, it's been all of you guys, which is, it's a testament to all talent, but also the fact that you can actually hang together. I think we like each other. Yeah, yeah, oh, I, I can tell. And it, and, it show, and it shows in the, in the music, too. Um, so I know you're gonna play us two songs, and one of them is um, Grizzly Bell, Bear, Billboard, but that, I believe, is second, so what's yeah. first? So we're gonna do one of the newer songs called Find Myself Again first. And that is unreleased at this point. Yes, but okay. it will be out, uh, I believe we're gonna put that out as a digital single. Okay. Um, in the next Coming up. Uh, month or so, yeah. All right, all right, we'll, we'll keep you posted on that. So, uh, boys, are you ready? I'm gonna go back into that voice. Are you ready to do this thing? I'm ready. Yeah, yeah. Nice okay. Thing. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Blue Country Lips. <laughs> God found him and he was touched by the Lord But I'm not at all like that man Tired old stories, we relate to them less than you do. Why bother telling them? 
join Country Lips for their 10-year anniversary blowout show on Saturday, February 16th at the Tractor Tavern in Ballard. Hi, my name's Matt, and this is your Movie Minute. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about a movie that's a Nigerian remake of Purple Rain. It was made by a Portland musicologist who went to this part of Africa to sort of investigate the music scene there, and he found this musician named Ungu Mokhtar, who writes all of his own songs and is heavily involved in sort of the music trading, and he decided to sort of graft this guy's story onto that semi-autobiographical music movie like Purple Rain. What's really cool about this is that it was filmed in a language called Toreg, and it's the first movie ever made in that language. As I said, it's a remake of Purple Rain, but the, that language doesn't have a word for purple, so the actual title of the movie is Rain the Color of Blue with a Little Red in It. And what you've got is one of the most unusual things I've ever seen. It's packed with great music and gorgeous cinematography, and you really owe it to yourself to check it out. All right, so you can find Rain the Color Blue with a little bit of red in it right here in the new release section, and later on it'll be upstairs in the rock musical section. My name is Matt, and that was your Movie Minute. And that's a wrap. Thanks to Georgetown Stables and to you for tuning in. We'll be back soon with more local art, including a wonderful story on Pops, a musician and the beloved unofficial mayor of Belltown. Have a great week. Derby down in Kitsap County Sneak out to the bar Tear that place apart And leave it